everyone, and welcome back to the Go Talk to English podcast. I am your host, Teacher Emily, coming to you live from the United States of America. Now, when I'm not teaching English, one of my specialties and passion is beauty and skincare. And today I'm going to share my knowledge with you. Well, because here in the United States, we are getting ready to well, fall into our summer season. It is getting nice and sunny outside. The temperature is raising. It's getting hotter. Whoops. Anyway, this, well, normally without COVID, would allow us to go out to the beach or just outside and enjoy the warm weather. So we are going to make sure you are all set and ready to know what to do when it comes to your eyebrows. Today is going to be a special video on brow shaping. Before we get started, I am going to change out of my glasses into my contact lenses. Unfortunately, my glasses wearers will relate to, well, when it comes to makeup and glasses, they don't always mix well. So we're gonna go ahead and get changed real quick and I'll meet you back here with my eyeballs in. Alrighty, that is much better. Now that I have my contacts in, it's much easier to touch my face, to get nice and close, because it's all about the details. First off with brow shaping, shaping of the brows. To understand how we need to make our brows, we have to understand why, why we do it in the first place. So there are many, many, many different face shapes ranging from round, square, diamond, heart. However, psychologists have found as humans, we are attracted to symmetrical things, things that are even and the same on both sides. Of course, brow trends come and go, especially all throughout history. Right now, we have the oh-so-trendy Kardashian thick brow. If you're not too worried about that, brow shaping really comes down to what is best for your face. Anything that involves makeup is about accentuating the good qualities and kind of hiding and taking away from any of the negative qualities. When we do highlighting, contouring, and brow shaping, this is about kind of making those corrections to help the face become more symmetrical, more perfect. But don't worry, if makeup is just something that you like to wear, that's great. You don't have to be perfect, you just have to like the way that you look. So, let's get started. First, you are going to need something nice and straight. This is an applicator, or sometimes called a popsicle stick, but uh, we don't like to call it that at work, because it makes people think that you put it in your mouth, and we don't do that. <laughs> Not with these. So you want something nice and straight because thankfully Mr. Leonardo da Vinci drew a lot of artwork to show the perfect human form. What a perfect face, a perfect body uh, figure should look like. And well, it looks so good that we've just been using it for forever in all of art. If you are an artist and you have experience in drawing people's faces, well, this is going to be something super easy for you because we're gonna do proportions. Now, proportions are what goes where, how much space is being taken up by a certain object. The face should be split into thirds. You have the top half, the middle, and then your mouth. So cheeks, uh, forehead, cheeks, and chin. So whenever we look at the eyes, ideally eyes that are the perfect distance apart, you will be able to put the length of one eyeball in between them. So if I take my eye right here, okay, I'm gonna get a good measurement and we're just gonna move it over. It's a little wide. I've got a little bit of a big space right there. So the reason why that comes into play is we're gonna take a brow pencil or an eyeshadow pencil, um, whatever we're going to use 
to whatever you are going to use for your brows today. I'll talk a little bit about your different options, but for this first step, you just need something to make some marks. You wanna be able to see, well, where you want your brows to be. So first off, I'm going to take my long straight object and I'm going to go to my nostril. So I'm gonna find my nostril, I'm gonna go straight up and I'm just gonna make a little line right there. Okie dokie, pretty good, pretty good. Start, starting out pretty great. So I'm gonna kind of sit up close. Now, unfortunately, I was not blessed by the brow goddess with fluffy, full brows. Um, but this video today is all about how I overcome that and get past it. Uh, it's not fun. <laughs> Because um, even the camera, the camera right now is having a really hard time trying to find my eyebrows because they're so thin and they're so tiny. That's my hair. I promise. It's not it's not a shadow. It's, it's not eyeshadow. It's, it's my hair. So anyway, we have our first mark. So again, we're going to start at the nostril and we want to go right past the corner of the eye. This is going to tell us where our tail, where our tail should end. So again, with the nostril, and we want to angle it right up past the corner of the eye, that nice even angle. I'm going to take it here and... I forgot where I am. Too far down. There we go. Mistakes happen. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Alrighty. So you can already see. Let me use my pointer. This is about where my natural brow ends. And according to the measurement I just made, it should go down a lot further. We want more of that round framing shape which I'm very aware of this. My eyebrows need help. They're so small and skinny. They're poor baby brows. All right. Now for the important part. Usually eyebrows have a natural angle, a natural arch where they kind of just peek up. So in order to find the location for where our arch needs to be, you need to look straight dead on, which is gonna be hard with the camera. So <clears throat> you need to look straight ahead at the mirror, take your straight edge, your straight tool. Make sure I'm right here. And again, we're gonna make a little mark, just right up there. Okie dokie. So not too far off, not too bad. <clears throat> Just to do a quick outline for you, I'm gonna draw a quick dummy brow, a quick mock brow. We're gonna make the connections of where my eyebrow, my new eyebrow, it's gonna be so sloppy, is going to be. I'm gonna bring it down here. Come back up into that arch. Once I hit that line, that's when I'm going to go into my angle. All righty. So if you'll notice, I basically tried to trace as close to my real eyebrow as possible while following my new guidelines for the perfect, beautiful brow. This is because it's very, very hard to try and cover up areas where you don't have any hair. If you're like me and you have, well, thin eyebrows, if you try to make them thicker, the more makeup you use, the more noticeable it might become. Which brings us into color. Let's talk about contrast. Contrast is the ability to, well, see things side by side clearly, distinctly. For instance, black and white. Whenever black and white are right next to each other, it pops. There's contrast. There are opposites, so they help to complement each other. You notice both of them at the same time with equal appreciation. When it comes to your brows, it really, really is boiled down to what kind of contrast would you like? Me personally, when I wear makeup, I like a more natural look. 
So today you'll be seeing that a lot of my tools are in the shade of brown. Uh, I have my brow pencil right here. This is just a normal charcoal pencil, or not charcoal, the color is brown, but it's a normal pencil. And then I also have a compact of powder. So these are my go-to options for filling in my brows when it comes to brow shaping. Uh, the powder, uh, you'll see, I feel like it gives a more subtle, more minimal kind of uh, helping hand. Whereas the pencil, the pencil is more something that I would use whenever I'm doing my whole face, whenever I'm really getting ready or going out. I've got the eyeshadow on, got the lipstick on, the cheeks are done and everything. I want to make sure that my brows have that same contrast because it looks great when you wear eye, sh eye uh, mascara, mascara. It looks great when you wear mascara and eyeliner, but it's very, very noticeable when the brows are not done. It looks unfinished, not quite complete. The brows are the frames of the face. If the eyes are the windows into the soul, well, these are our frames. And we need to make sure our frames have that distinct look. When it comes to your color that you choose, well, as you can see, I have very, very dark hair. My natural hair color is naturally dark. Uh, it's not quite black. The camera's not gonna, oh, it might, but it's a very, very deep, rich brown. However, that might make me think, oh, well, I need to get a pencil or a color that matches my hair. Slow down. Not necessarily. We, uh, with our hair, the hair catches light. You will see that when you're inside, sometimes your hair is darker. When you go outside, it's brighter. It tends to shine more brightly. Makeup does not do that. <laughs> Makeup is very solid. It's very dense. It doesn't catch the light. It just kind of hits it and goes away. So because of that, we don't want these harsh, straight, full on colors. Instead, we wanna try and pick out a color that is one to two shades lighter than our natural hair color or whatever color your hair is. Some people like to put color in their eyebrows to match their colored hair and some people just like to do cool things. It's all about your purpose. When it comes to brow shaping colors, now they usually range from a wide variety, blonde, brown, red, and black. But again, I urge a very, very, very extra cautious reminder when it comes to black, black is very, very harsh. If you have deep, rich, velvety dark skin, black is probably going to work the best for you because again, you need that contrast. If your skin is already a nice deep brown, well, using a deep brown pencil is not going to help so much. So for this reason, if you are someone with fair skin or just nah, brown hair, try and stay away from the black pencil unless you need that drama, that harshness. And just to show you what I'm talking about, here's me with black eyebrows. Ah! <laughs> As you can see, like I said, black can be too harsh, too much contrast. So whenever it comes to your color, let's start off with a nice light brown um, for anyone that has dark hair. You wanna try to go for a nice soft brown, again, about one to two shades lighter than your natural hair color. So for our first demonstration on my Let's see, we're gonna go ahead and make this the left brows, my left side. We're gonna start with my left brow and we're gonna start with our powder. This is my favorite go-to. I love to use this for nice natural looks. So with the powder, I have this nice light shade of brown. You can see that it's very, very much, uh, very, very uh, lighter than my hair color. That's good because my goal here is not to 
make the hair just yet. I want to make the shadows. I want to create the illusion that my brows have an extra thickness. Because my hairs are a dark color themselves, they're gonna give that that extra pop. Now, a key tool for when we're doing the brows is to use a brow uh, brush. Forgetting my English, my goodness. A brow brush. Now, what makes this brush so distinct and so unique is that it is angled. It's not straight. It goes up into an angle, which is great for our eyes. And also, my finger has shadow on it. It's very firm. It doesn't bend. It doesn't, it's not soft. Whenever you have a nice, puffy, soft, fluffy brush, well, that's great for making, uh, uh, for colors. That's great for blending. It's great for adding color in layers, you know, more and more as you go. But with here, we want to make hairs. We want those nice tapered little lines that look like, well, tapered hairs of the eyebrow. So for this, I'm going to start with my nice light brown, dipping it in my powder, going on the left brow. And for an easier angle, just to make sure your skin is nice and firm, it's not gonna go anywhere, you wanna put your finger, notice how I'm using either the middle finger or your ring finger, you want a nice gentle finger, and you gently just wanna raise up. Now you don't wanna pull it all the way up here because when you let go, your brow is going to always be up here. So just nice and gently, just to hold the skin in place. And... I'm just going to go in All right. and if you're not sure if a color is going to work well with you, you can try it out on your hand and just test it. See, okay, no, nope, that's going to be a good shade. Now this color is just only slightly darker than my skin tone. We're gonna bring that tail down and I'm gonna come back up. Just nice little strokes. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to build. I had two browns. I'm going to use my deep, uh, my light brown and then my deeper brown, my darker brown. I have a very bad habit of not talking when I do makeup. It just, it's very, concentration inducing all right so i'm gonna double check in my mirror oh yes oh yes it's beautiful perfect i'm cheating i have a mirror next to me so that way i can make sure i'm not looking too crazy it's hard to look into the camera and do makeup beauty bloggers i salute you <laughs> okay so we have laid down the base. Now, just to kind of give you a good idea of what this color is, I'm gonna put a nice big old line on the forehead. See, it's not very dark. It's not a whole lot, but look already at the difference side by side. I have one eyebrow that looks like a five o'clock shadow. It looks like it's barely there. And I have another eyebrow that actually looks like it's part of my face. And I also have a smudge on my forehead. There we go. Let's go ahead and just uh, get rid of that. No Simba moments here. All right, but a nice close-up. So here I have a much more defined brow. This one looks fuller. It looks like it has more hair inside of it. But again, I have naked brows. We need more help than this. If you like that natural, subtle look, you can stop here. Well, do your other brow, of course, but you can leave it just at this layer. But I come in with a part two, again, with that darker brown. So just like what we did with our first step, we're just gonna get some nice powder on there. You can gently tap your brush to get off any excess, shake off any loose powder. We don't want any fallout. And with this one, I wanna be a little bit more precise because this is my darker color. This is going to be a little bit more noticeable. I'm gonna hold up my brow, jangle my hand. Just nice, gentle hair strokes. All 
right, all right, all right. So here comes another handy tool that you might want to have. This is a brow spoolie. It's a little hard to see on the camera. She doesn't focus very well on small things. But it's basically just a little brush. It looks like a mascara brush. And we're going to use this to kind of blend and comb the brows. Now, you may have noticed there's a little bit of a, uh, there was a white side of my brow compact that is brow gel. It's a nice cream, kind of a, a pomade, a balm. And you use that to help control your brows. Sometimes people with longer brows, they tend to curl or they might kind of get a cowlick, a flyaway hair in their eyebrows and the pomade, the brow balm, brow uh, gel is great for smoothing those down and getting that nice, sleek, groomed appearance. So I'm just gonna do a couple of strokes. I wanna make sure that the colors are nice and blended. I don't want any harsh lines in my eyebrows. I don't want anything that says, oh, that's makeup. I try to avoid that. You know, if someone's up close, well, I can't help it right then, but far away, I don't want to draw too much attention, you know? Now, one thing I will mention is my nose. My nose is very wide. We talked about proportions. My nose takes up a good proportion of my face. It's much wider than, well, the Da Vinci nose is. So for this reason, I usually elect, I opt to take my brows in just a little bit further, just to kind of close that gap to not make my nose look so wide. All right, all right, all right. Now we're blending, just gentle brushing. Excellent, excellent. And I have this one little patch in my eyebrow from where I got hurt as a kid. I'm gonna take my dark color and ever so gently just gonna fill that in. Very good, very good. Excellent. Okay. Perfection. So one more thing, one more thing. Do, do, bring that tail down just a little bit. All righty. Okay. And now that I'm finished with the powder, one more brush. Blending is important if you want to go natural. You don't want to have too much harshness, too much just, whoa. So for instance, now I have one eyebrow that's done and one that's not. So just for a comparison. Hi, look, I'm Emily. Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> See, it definitely makes a bit of a difference, or not a bit, the world of a difference. My apologies. Okay, so for brow number two, we're gonna go ahead and use our pencil, pencil. Now with pencil, it usually doesn't come with a brow gel. You don't really need it because the pencil itself is naturally waxy. It's kind of got that natural sticky texture to it. And that helps to smooth down the brows, keep them in place. So again, with my pencil, this might look black, but we have our dark brown right here. I wish you could see the letters it says dark brown right there anyway so we're going to do the same thing that we did with our powder first we're going to start with our lighter color lay down our foundation and fill in with our darker color again still working with colors that are lighter than my hair color so here we go with our light brown with pencil it's a little bit easier to make those nice straight hairlines. Okay. 
all right, all right, all right. I'm gonna go over to my mirror for the details because my brows do not show up on camera. <laughs> it's the worst thing in the world. Because sometimes when I take photos, it looks like I don't have eyebrows. And I hate it. Because they're there, I promise. They're just hard to see sometimes. Okay. So again, the same process. Now, if you like a bolder, more defined look, um, you might want to skip this step of, of blending out and combing down our newly laid foundation, which is fine. But for me, I'm just going to blend it out a little bit because I'm going to come back in with, with my darker color. All right. Very nice. Very even. Checking for evenness. Good, good, good. Tail's a little short. Now it's a little long. There we go. <laughs> all right, all right. So now time for our darker color. Now already, my brows almost match. So with the pencil, we're instantly getting that deeper contrast, that darker contrast. Because, well, it's a waxy pencil, not a powder that we can blend. So here, let me... What happened to my pencil sharpener? Let me sharpen. go through these things like crazy. There we go. All right, nice and sharp. Now, I'm going in. And I'm gonna take this opportunity to just kind of define my brow a little bit more. Let's fill it in. Filling in the gaps, covering the hairs. A little bit more, just gonna go in nice and blend it. Blend out the beginning just a little bit. Ooh. Blend in. Very good, very good. Very chic. I'm the blended girl. I know this girl. All right. Anyway, back to what I was saying. So there we have it. We have our powder brow, and then we have our brow pencil brow. So this one, our brow pencil, uh, this is what I go for my more glamorous, my more done up look. It stands out much more, it has much more contrast. Now, when I'm wearing a full face of makeup, it looks more complete. I look ready because you can't leave the house doing your makeup and not do your brows. No, 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 no. And with my shadow brow, this is more of my casual kind of everyday wear. This is what I just normally put on to make it look like I have eyebrows. Now, of course, what we did today was a great example of using makeup to help to accentuate and exaggerate the natural beauty of our brows. But when it comes to having too much brow, whether that's too long, too thick, or well, too many, or well, just one brow, uh, that can be an issue that calls for, well, extra measures. This can be waxing, threading, or uh, shaving. Some people shave their brows, which I don't recommend because it's very, very itchy. And um, well, it could go badly, very, very quickly. But using today's tips and tricks, using today's measurement tools, and just practicing, well, creating brows on your face, that can help you see what kind of shape brows fit your face the most what suits you the best. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash off my face because I look pretty uh, 
pretty interesting. Here's a good before and after shot of what it looks like whenever I do something to my eyebrows. The brows, they frame the face. They're very, very important. A very vital key when it comes to our appearance. So don't forget about them. Let me know what your favorite product to use is today in the comments section. I am curious what kind of makeup brands are there around the world or well, what's the brow trend in your country right now? Is it thick brows? Is it thin skinny brows? Let us know. We love to hear from you guys. We love to connect and communicate. So please let your presence be known. Be sure to check out our website at www.gotalktu.com to visit amazing native teachers like myself and to learn the language that you are interested in. We also have wonderful extracurricular activities and be sure to sign up and enroll so that way you can get the latest information about our new summer activities. Thank you guys so much. It's been real. And don't forget to be kind to others, but also be kind to yourself. I love you guys. See you next time. Bye.